always dreamed of becoming a pilot? The world's airline companies are predicted to need more than half a million new pilots over the next two decades. That's the equivalent of about 28,000 pilots each year. But meeting this huge demand won't be easy. Training a new pilot is a long process, typically taking about 18 months. It also requires deep pockets. A trainee pilot can rack up debt of over £100,000 to get a licence in the UK. This is an issue that deeply troubles the British Association of Pilots. We've been pressing, um, for instance, to use a new apprenticeship levy as a means of helping. We'd like to see the industry itself put in money. If you want to be a, become a pilot, then you pay for it. And we don't think that's fair. And what has happened as a result of that is that the industry is now struggling to find enough pilots to fly their aircraft. So the industry has been very short-sighted about this. And we've been seeing, suggesting to the minister and to leading chief executives, we need to get together and find a far better way of uh, making sure that the UK has enough pilots for the future. Historically, airlines paid for an individual's training. But today, the onus is on the aspiring pilot. Most trainees have to cover the costs with loans from the bank or by borrowing from family. British Airways is one of a number of airlines that offers a sponsorship programme, which gives between 50 to 100 people each year a loan to fund upfront costs that's then repaid when they become a full-time pilot. Much of a pilot's training is carried out in state-of-the-art simulators like the ones here at BA's training centre near Heathrow. They offer the ability to recreate every aspect of flying a plane without having to take off into the sky. The training is really expensive for us, so um, uh, as you've seen, we have an amazing facility here. Um, uh, that's cost a few bob to, uh, to put together, I have to say, but, uh, but training is an absolute must. In fact, we, we literally bake the cost of training a pilot into the everyday cost of a pilot because it's something we absolutely have to do. We have very high standards for the pilots that we recruit, uh, and I'm very pleased to say we're getting exactly the right numbers through the door, but, uh, but we're not complacent. Airlines believe one answer to addressing the shortfall of pilots is to attract more females. Globally, only about 3% of pilots are women. That's about 4,000 out of 130,000 pilots worldwide. I think the way that we should try and encourage more female pilots in the industry is sort of trying to increase the visibility. I think lots of people don't think of careers if they haven't seen someone themselves doing the job. So as many kind of female pilots can get out into the community speaking to schools and colleges and just being seen generally in the terminal by customers and stuff increases that sort of visibility. But even with more women, airlines are facing a looming crisis of not having enough pilots to fuel future growth. There will be uh, at some point more of a, uh, a crunch point. Um, and we see it a little bit in, in places like Eastern Europe, for instance, where some of the low-cost carriers out there have had to uh, raise their, their flight hour pay for, for the first officers um, to avoid them going off to other regions. Um, but for the time being in Europe, although it's getting tighter, um, it's not yet a challenge because so many people still want to do this career and are happy to take on um, those big financial burdens. It looks like a longer-term solution could be needed for the industry with airlines, training providers and governments working together to make sure becoming a pilot remains an attractive and affordable career and not one just for the rich. Tanya Poli, Financial Times, London.